From the studios of Seven Perth, Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening. We begin with a fight for life. The young Perth woman deliberately set on fire. Dana Vulan has been left horribly disfigured and if she survives her severe burns, recovery will be long and painful. This afternoon, her distraught family released a short statement. Grant Taylor reports. A bright, bubbly 25-year-old now horribly disfigured and fighting for life. Dana Vullen's burns are more extensive than first thought, covering 60% of her body, including her face. Her airways are also scorched, the result of being doused with what's believed to have been methylated spirits and then set alight. Burns has been described as one of the most painful things that a person can suffer. A burn injury itself is probably the most painful. Police believe Dana Vullen would have known her attacker. A crime like this had to be personal. Whoever it was climbed over a wall and then broke into Dana's apartment through her patio doors. That was sometime between 6.30 and 7am yesterday. Her attacker was gone by the time Dana's neighbours found her smouldering and screaming. Dana is now on life support. Tubes down her throat are helping her to breathe. Her family released a statement today saying it's almost impossible to comprehend. Dana is a beautiful, kind woman who has the biggest heart you can ever imagine. Our family appreciates the hundreds of prayers and support we've received and urge the public to please contact Crime Stoppers if they know anything. Police have told the family that they do have some strong leads, but so far, no arrests and no indication either of why Dana Vullen was the target of such a despicable act. As a doctor, we see such awful things that, um, yeah, it's, it, is, it is incomprehensible. Grant Taylor, 7 News. City officials clashed with Aboriginal protesters this morning when the activists were ordered to close their camp on Harrison Island. As Jeff Parry reports, the protesters are refusing to leave. City of Perth sent its CEO to the Noongar campsite on Harrison Island, orders to tear it down in his back pocket. You're illegally? You're illegally? We're illegally, 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 illegally on our land? We're illegally on our land? We're illegally on our land? Warra, warra, warra! I've served the notice on you. No, warra. you haven't. It was met with anger and defiance. After this embassy, yeah, get out of here. This is our land. There's a notice that I leave here for you. You get Say, removed your your land. Land. This is ever in your sovereign land. It doesn't belong to anyone else but us. They vow not to move. This is what we think of your notice. Can you send your cleaners back to pick all the paper up? City of Perth's Frank Edwards says they have to take down their tents and move their cars. I would hope that they would respect our laws the way they are asking us to respect their customary laws. Noongar leaders say the council didn't follow correct diplomatic procedure. This is an embassy. In an embassy, you have to go and knock on the door, ring us up or, or ask for an interview. The camp is now in its fifth day, the occupiers showing all the signs of a long-term stay. They're protesting against the state government's attempts to secure a billion-dollar native title deal with another Noongar group. This group of people aren't going to sign off on any dotted line for a billion dollars or a trillion dollars. So, Jeff, the deadline for the protesters has now passed. What's happened? Well, Rick, it's all quiet at the moment. They're actually just holding a meeting. But it's unlikely to stay that way if the protesters here decline to break up their camp. It's not a police issue at the moment. It's a matter for local government. But it's a difficult one for the, for the uh, local council to resolve. What's going to happen? Well, at some stage, it's expected that the city council will send in local government officials to move the tents and to move the cars. And if they meet resistance, then they'll call in the police to back up the rangers. When will that happen? Well, probably sooner rather than later. But the council won't say, the police won't say, and the Aboriginal protesters here don't know. Sue. Thanks, Jeff. An L plater who was drunk when he crashed and killed a teenage boy could walk free from jail in two years. The family of his victim says the sentence isn't enough and it sends the wrong message. Emmy Kabansky reports. A show of support for a teenager's life cut short. Shocked at the jail sentence handed down to the man that killed teenager Luke Bayer. The penalties aren't aren't tough enough and it makes me feel that his life wasn't worth anything. Luke Bayer was just 17, killed by a drunk driver. 23-year-old Corey Nepia-Keelan, the one behind the wheel. A learner driver, drunk and speeding. A driver who should never have been on the road. Today jailed for four years, 
eligible for parole in two. I mean, basically, he's going to serve two years. It was May last year. Here in Balladura, Luke Bayer was on his way home. His car was stationary when another just smashed into it. Corey Nepia-Keelan had a blood alcohol level of 0.107. Driving up to 90 k's in a 50 zone, Corey Nepia-Keelan pleaded guilty to causing bodily harm to two other people. Today's courtroom packed with Luke's family and friends. Standing room only. Victims of road violence here too, like Eva Ellis, the Atwell mum run down outside her home. All here to say enough is enough. A third of people on our roads are killed by drink riders. What message does today's sentence send to those people on our roads? Just think, think before you drink and drive because the consequences are devastating. Emmy Kabansky, 7 News. Thousands of passengers are stranded tonight by the collapse of budget carrier Air Australia. Many are overseas in Thailand, Taiwan and Hawaii, with some only learning of their predicament after they'd boarded their planes. Air Australia was marooned on the tarmac today. Its flight stalled after the airline couldn't even afford a tank of fuel, leaving passengers in Honolulu stuck at the airport. They said, forget it. They said, plane is grounded. That's it. After three hours waiting in the plane to leave, passengers and crew on a flight from Phuket to Melbourne were told to get off. Like passengers left in tears back in Australia, they'd turned up for flights today to find empty check-in counters. Just anger. Just anger. Left holding invalid tickets. Travel plans devastated. Yeah, because it's our daughter's wedding next week. If Qantas International is, it can't make money, then small niche carriers uh, would be uh, really out of their depth. Formerly strategic, the Brisbane-based budget carrier is now in administration. It's a bad set of numbers. 4,000 stranded, 300 out of a job and 100,000 tickets useless. Chris Mark, 7 News. And the job losses keep coming with layoffs looming at clothing companies Bonds and Billabong. Caltex Australia has also flagged the possible closure of refineries, putting 800 workers at risk. That hum you hear is the Caltex refinery at Kurnell. Along with the company's Brisbane plant, it produces a third of our nation's fuel. The company says they could both close. 800 jobs are threatened. Surfwear company Billabong announced layoffs too after posting a 72% fall in first half profit. It'll close stores and dump 400 workers, 80 in Australia. The company's gone from $16 a share to $1.79 before the cutbacks were announced. A wipeout for workers doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for the company. As soon as its announcement hit traders' screens today, Billabong shares bounced 60%. Surf's up. Elsewhere, though, spirits are down. The GFC is about to hit us. Telstra workers protested in Melbourne against jobs going offshore. 255 to India, 90 more at risk. Damien Smith, 7 News. The ANZ, which announced a thousand job cuts and was first to hike interest rates, has now revealed a record profit. The bank made $1.48 billion in the last few months of 2011, up 5.7 per cent. But the bank says it's facing higher funding costs and criticism from politicians isn't helping. Police investigating an attack on a Warnborough man have asked for help to find a teenager. Detectives want to talk to Frederick Woods, who's 18. Terry O'Brien was at home with his family on Sunday night when he confronted two men who'd broken in. One of them smashed a bottle in his face. I'm more worried about my family. Um, my wife's quite distressed over it. She, she, she was unable to come home. She's been staying with friends since the incident. Frederick Woods is 170 centimetres tall with a medium build. More people are being fined for flouting Perth's sprinkler bans. With our dams below 33% capacity, Seven News went on patrol with the Water Corp to reveal which suburbs have the worst offenders. Jessica Vanderand reports. It's 4am and George Kiedis is patrolling Perth's streets. So we just follow this trail of water. Let's see where it leads us to. That's number six, so it wasn't his day. At random and acting on tip-offs. There's no quota, it's just that uh, um, 
Obviously, the few fines we hand out means that people are doing the right thing. He's been enforcing sprinkler bans for 10 years. I've heard every excuse under the sun. Perth's January hot spell is being blamed for a rise in the number of fines with more court watering overnight early this year. We've um, increased our, uh, our patrols of our water efficiency inspection officers. They're going earlier. During our hottest January in 34 years, 870 people were caught breaching summer water restrictions compared to 828 the year before. Murder's ticking over. The worst offenders are Yanchip, Baldivis, Canningvale, Ellenbrook and Bennett Springs in Perth's East. Two homes in one street the morning we were there. Caught red-handed. Yes. <laughs> they can expect $100 fines. A third homeowner asked to repair a broken pipe, wasting litres and costing dollars. Jessica Van Der 7 News. News now of a major blow for the Eagles. On the eve of a new season, they've lost one of their best players, Barra. That's right, Sue. West Coast will not have Mark Lacra for the whole of 2012. Scans today confirmed the club's worst fears. Their best forward needs a total knee reconstruction. Like he'd done many times before, Mark Lacrasse simply stepped off his right leg to avoid a tackle. This time, though, his knee buckled, rupturing his anterior cruciate ligament. There was immediate searing pain and then an anxious wait for the scan results. He prepared himself for the worst. This morning, Lacrasse's fears were confirmed. His main ligament was shot and he'd missed the season. An orthopaedic surgeon explains how it can happen. When it's torn... Uh, there's a twisting in the knee and it tears, tears the ligament. Yeah, he's obviously down, but uh, you know, he's a good kid and um, you know, we'll get around him and make sure he's going to be OK. The Eagles' goal of playing in this year's grand final has taken a blow. But with their leading goal scorer sidelined, they could turn to former Bulldog Josh Hill. He's a classy player. I watched him and playing against him a few times. You know, he's a tough opponent to play against and obviously training around here, you know, being alongside him has obviously shown me a few things to work on as well. Adrian Barrage, 7 News. Stay with us here on 7 News till to come. Why we're being told not to trust food labels. Plus political disharmony. Kevin Rudd upstages the Prime Minister again. For the coming. And did he really look down there? Princess Mary catches out her dinner guest. That's next. In Seven's Money Watch, the Australian share market finished at a one-month high, sparked by a robust Wall Street overnight. The ASX 200 rose 14 points, while the All Ords added 16. Most major sectors were higher, materials the only one bucking the trend. Surfwear retailer Billabong will shed 400 jobs and sell a chunk of its accessories business as part of a major restructure. Shares in the company closed 83 cents higher. Among the miners, BHP Billiton was down 10 cents, Rio Tinto also softer, dropping 71 cents. One Australian dollar is buying a dollar and eight US cents. A new report shows Australian students are underperforming compared with students in Asian countries. The Grattan Institute study found the average 15-year-old maths student in China is three years ahead of students here. And Korean students are seven months more advanced in reading. The report says Australia should focus more on improving the quality of teaching practices. Australia's food regulators are set to crack down on labels, especially those that claim foods are fat-free. There's concern about what the labels aren't telling us, including the amounts of sugar, salt and everything else that's bad. Fat-free, it's a promise many find hard to resist, but according to nutritionists, we should. The worst offender without a doubt is something like the confectionery, so just three jelly snakes, the nutritional equivalent of two slices of bread. But because the packet's splattered with things like natural and 99% fat-free, people automatically think that's a better choice, but at the end of the day they're still lollies and full of sugar. Australia's food regulator has launched a national debate on the use of fat-free labels after it found more than 100 items failed nutrition tests. At the moment, products that carry fat-free claims have a health halo around them. Um, they draw your attention away from the less healthy attributes in that product. Rice crackers, which claim to be fat-free, are actually high in salt and carbohydrates. Similarly, two-minute noodles. The food regulator is trying to get industry and consumer input to take before the government in June to try to get these food labels abolished. Talitha Cummins, 7 News. 
Kevin Rudd has added crooner to his list of accomplishments during the Queensland election. The former PM took centre stage in Brisbane, eager to grab the microphone. For the coming good. You get one more chance no, to get no, it right. No, 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 no. School students were impressed, giving him this message. You should be Prime Minister, Mr Rudd. Well, school kids are always nice. <laughs> In Canberra, also at a school, Julia Gillard fended off questions about whether it was time to call a leadership spill to clear the air. Princess Mary has had an uncomfortable moment. She caught the husband of Finland's president looking down her dress. They were at a dinner hosted by the Queen of Denmark when a camera and Mary noticed his gaze. As she turns, he knows he's been caught, quickly looking the other way. But Mary's on to him and casually covers her chest as she adjusts her gown. Ronnie Corbett's famous sense of humour has seemingly been lost on the Queen as he received a royal honour at Buckingham Palace. The veteran comedian was made a commander of the British Empire for services to entertainment and charity. Did you manage to make the Queen laugh? I don't think so. <laughs> she was, uh, no, she was very uh, happy and joyous and lovely. The two Ronnie star says he's delighted. Well, it's Friday night. Adrian Barrett rejoins us now on a tough day for Eagles fans, Barra. Sure was, Rick. We'll cross live to Subi for the latest on Mark Lacroix's knee injury as the NAB Cup gets underway. Bounce down 2012. The footy's back and so is the Super Goal. There is a Super Goal. And Australia collapses at the SCG against Sri Lanka. Oh, that was a terrible mix-up. There's also a run. Hello, Natalia Yacoupa with you. That haze was back with a vengeance this morning. As you can see from these pictures, it did clear substantially by this afternoon, but the Weather Bureau says we could see more haze tomorrow. On Sunday, though, it'll finally be pushed out to sea. It's been hanging over Perth for five days now. Currently in the city, it's 24 and a half humidity at 65%. It wasn't too hot today, a top of 28.9 after a low overnight of 19.1. Around the metro area, a little cooler at Northern today than it's been in the past couple of days, a top of 34. Most other suburbs had tops in the high 20s. Around WA today, it was very hot in the gold fields, 43 in Kalgoorlie. There have been some isolated storms out that way as well. There were some morning showers along the western south coast. Tomorrow, 10 degrees cooler and the risk of a storm in Kalgoorlie and a shower or two expected in both Albany and Esperance. Let's check out the satellite picture now and a trough in the eastern southwest land division is triggering those storms. Tomorrow, a mid-level disturbance will bring some isolated shower and storm activity. Interstate tomorrow, the chance of a storm in Sydney, some early drizzle for Hobart and becoming sunny in Melbourne. Boating information, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, tending south to southwest 18 to 23 during the afternoon seas to two meters and swell to one and a half so there could still be some haze around tomorrow but it should be all gone by sunday we're going for a top of 31 after a low of 20 then 35 on sunday a very hot 37 on monday and 35 on tuesday after that it's going to stay fine and it is cooling off a little before I go, the WA Off-Road Racing Association are holding a special charity ride day on Sunday at the Wanneroo Speedway. All the money raised from that will go towards the Starlight Children's Foundation, so get along. And before I go, also happy 63rd wedding anniversary to Beryl and Alan Davies of Palmelia. Have a great weekend. Here, Rick and Sue. Thanks, Natalia. That's 7 News this Friday. Sally Bowery is here this weekend. Have a good one. Here's Monica now with Today Tonight. Nobody